Did you know that Mark Wahlberg legally can't own a gun? Mark is known for starring in The Departed and The Gambler, and with a net worth of $300 million, he's a celebrity icon. Mark has a dark past, though, including violence, addiction, prison, and so much more. Today, we'll reveal Mark Wahlberg's shocking secrets that Hollywood doesn't want you to know. Stick around for number one, because we'll share the real reason Mark is banned from ever owning a gun. Before Mark Wahlberg became a hugely successful Hollywood star, he was a totally different person. He started out as a rapper for a group called The Funky Bunch and acted as their leader. Mark's stage name was Marky Mark, and believe it or not, he became a chart-topping sensation. Back then, Mark built his career on a bad boy persona, and this meant dressing, acting, and looking a certain way. For Mark, this meant getting a lot of tattoos all over his body. According to Mark, he had eight or nine tattoos that covered his entire body. Mark said, they were all around my arms, legs, back, stomach, and neck. This was great for Marky Mark, a bad boy rapper who burst onto the scene in the 90s, but it wasn't so great for very long. When Mark found success in Hollywood, he quickly put aside his rapper persona of Marky Mark. While Mark no longer went by the name Marky Mark, he was still covered in head-to-toe tattoos from his rapping days. In order to remove the tattoos, Mark asked for a meeting with his dermatologist. He said that Mark could get rid of all the tattoos over the course of five to seven years with a treatment taking place once per year. This plan was slow but less painful, and for Mark, it wasn't good enough. Instead, he had the tattoos removed in just under seven months. Removing all of his tattoos so quickly came at a cost, however, and Mark said the process hurt 1,000% more than getting the tattoos. When asked in an interview about what it felt like to have tattoos removed, Mark said, It was like having hot bacon grease flicked on you over and over again. Getting his tattoos may have been a painful process, but it was well worth it for Mark. When asked why he wanted the tattoos removed, he said it was about maturity and sensibility. Did you know Mark Wahlberg owns a chain of burger restaurants? In 2011, Mark Wahlberg and his brothers Donnie and Paul founded Wahlburgers. The aptly named restaurant opened in Massachusetts and quickly expanded out to other parts of the country. The growth of the Wahlburgers chain was helped by a reality TV series also called Wahlburgers on the A&E Network, which ran for 10 seasons and was even nominated for an Emmy. While the Wahlburgers chain has been a great success, some former employees tell a much darker story. In 2015, some former employees for the Wahlburgers restaurant in Coney Island launched a lawsuit against the company. They allege that they were unfairly stiffed on pay and tips during their time working for the Wahlburgers chain. One part of the lawsuit alleged that the restaurant was rampant with wage theft and claimed that it was in violation of federal and statewide labor laws. Inside the document, employees said that the Coney Island location paid workers for fewer hours than they actually worked, didn't provide proper overtime pay, and forced employees to share all their tips in a single tip pool. The employees also mentioned that they weren't given a $3,000 tip from the cast of Blue Bloods after they held a private event at the burger place. All of this painted a pretty negative picture of Wahlburgers, but how did the company respond to the accusations? Unfortunately for the Wahlburgers chain, this isn't their first lawsuit. In fact, the company has faced allegations of ransacking a location after the lease expired, turning a blind eye to labor law violations, and unfairly cutting franchisees out of their stake in the company. In a public response to the lawsuit and allegations, the company said, Wahlburgers is all about family. Treating people fairly and with respect is at the heart of our brand. Since this situation came to light yesterday, we've been working with Coney Burgers to better understand the circumstances. Most people don't know about Mark's spiritual life, but it's very important to him. Mark was raised in the Catholic Church and said in an interview that being Catholic is the most important aspect of my life. While many actors are concerned about their movies or net worth, Mark believes that comes second to being a good person. When speaking about life priorities, Mark said, being a good actor or producer, that's not going to help me sleep at night or get me into heaven. 
the most important thing from where I sit is to be a good father, a good husband, and a good human being. A man who helps his fellow man and raises his kids to be good human beings too. Every single aspect of my family life is joy. What's the secret to Mark's devout faith? Mark thanks his spiritual director, Father Flavin, for his robust spiritual life. Father Flavin has known Mark for several years, even when he struggled with addiction and dropped out of high school. More on that later. He's been in my life since I was 13, Mark said. He married me and my wife and baptized all my children. Some have even rumored that Father Flavin guides Mark in selecting his movie roles. Mark says that he thanks God every day for helping him through rough periods in his life and often speaks about his faith when asking for forgiveness for the mistakes he made in younger years. Mark also goes to Mass on a weekly basis and begins every morning with a prayer to God. In an interview, Mark said, If I can start out my day by saying my prayers and getting myself focused, then I know I'm doing the right thing. Mark has used his celebrity status to share the faith with the rest of the world, such as spending millions of dollars to fund Father Stew, a movie about a boxer who changes his life around and becomes a priest. Mark got his start as a rapper in the 1990s, but he wasn't the only up-and-comer in that genre. Around the same time Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch was taking off, another famous rapper was starting his career. Eminem exploded into fame throughout the 1990s, and not long after, some bad beef developed between the two famous rap stars. MTV hosted a segment called Total Request Live, and in 1999, they asked Mark and Eminem to go on the air together. Before the segment, Mark's handlers made a request. They didn't want any mention of Marky Mark or the Funky Bunch. Mark had put aside his rapper moniker only a year ago, and he was looking to turn over a new leaf. However, during the segment, Eminem said, why don't we stand together like we're a happy, fun bunch? Many people saw this as a veiled reference to the Funky Bunch, and Mark reacted very negatively to the remark. A year later, Eminem released a record called Drug Ballad, where he insulted Mark and called him a slur. That didn't make their relationship any better, and for many years, Mark and Eminem wouldn't talk to each other. Many years later, Mark met Eminem again at another MTV event. They made amends and no longer have any beef with each other. Mark gave an interview about his beef with Eminem, saying, I didn't give him credit for his talent a long time ago. I was a hater because he's a better rapper than me. In 1993, Mark landed a huge sponsorship deal that could make or break his career. While his early years as a rapper were up and down, things changed when Calvin Klein reached out for an advertising spot. The major company offered to pay thousands of dollars to Mark and would make him their premier underwear model. The image of Mark Wahlberg wearing nothing but white boxers was plastered all over New York and even featured a massive billboard at Times Square. Several civil rights groups weren't happy to see Mark becoming the face of a major company, especially when he had a rap sheet of crimes and racist remarks. They responded by organizing protests and put up stickers that read, Marky Mark, convicted racist, on every poster. Mark's publicist heard about this and went into damage control. Mark issued a public apology and pledged to make an anti-racism PSA. The PSA would be cancelled, however, after an even bigger scandal came to light. In July of 1993, the PSA was cancelled when word got out that Mark had physically attacked a record company executive. According to the police report, the attack began when Mark started making disparaging remarks about the LGBTQ members. The executive in question was none other than Guy Osiri, and the altercation was not the only incident of homophobia in Mark's past. That same year, Mark praised the rapper Shabba Ranks during a live TV segment for making more disparaging comments about the group. While Mark has apologized for this aspect of his past and even starred in a film about LGBT issues called Joe Bell, this is one part of his past that continually haunts Mark. Mark has had a troubled past with drugs, and it began when he was still growing up. At the age of just 13, Mark had a serious cocaine addiction. This addiction led him to drop out of high school and join a gang, and caused him to drop out of the boy band New Kids on the Block. 
The drug addiction led to Mark having over 15 run-ins with law enforcement as a teenager, and a brief period of jail time, as we'll see later on in this video. However, Mark decided after his arrest to change his life around. I'd ended up in the worst place I could possibly imagine, he said, and I never wanted to go back. Mark went to Deer Island Drug Rehab Center after his prison sentence and came back on the scene as a rapper known as Marky Mark, as we've already seen. While he had plenty of controversies during his rapping years, cocaine wasn't one of them. Mark would still use tobacco, marijuana, and alcohol at times, though. Eventually, he chose to set those aside as well at the age of 40. When asked why he chose to do so, Mark replied that he wanted to set a better example for his family. Mark couldn't be happier about his decision, and he's also never been healthier in his life. If you've ever seen Mark shirtless, you might have noticed a small bump below his left nipple. That isn't a mole or a zit, though. It's actually a third nipple. In 2010, Mark confirmed during an interview that he had a rare condition that led to having three nipples instead of two. It's called a supernumerary nipple, and roughly 200,000 people in the United States have one. A supernumerary nipple is an evolutionary remnant from the distant past that is present in some people due to genetic mutation. While totally harmless, it certainly surprised a lot of people when they found out Mark had one. What would you do if Mark Wahlberg was your next door neighbor? Having a celebrity as a neighbor might sound like a dream come true, but for Robert Crehan, it was a nightmare. In 1992, Mark Wahlberg was with his friend Derek McCall. Derek happened to be black, and the two of them were going about their business when a sudden fight broke out. According to Mark's attorney, the fighting started after someone who was with Robert called Derek an offensive name. Robert's lawyers told a different story, saying Mark, without provocation or justification, repeatedly struck Robert in his face. Mark continued to attack Robert while Derek held him to the ground. Whether or not someone called Derek by an offensive name, Mark's actions were still very illegal. Robert and his legal counsel brought criminal charges against Mark, and he was expected to stand trial for attacking his neighbor and messing up his jaw. Mark showed up to court not long after, but he wouldn't be going on trial in the end. Robert and his lawyers dropped all charges after they announced a settlement with the famous celebrity. Mark had issues with drugs, crime, and violence in the 1980s, but all of that paled in comparison to his racist past. In June of 1986, Mark and three other friends chased a 12-year-old African-American kid, Jesse Coleman, out of the neighborhood. During the chase, Mark and his friends shouted racial slurs at the boy. While he fled to a nearby Burger King, Mark and his friends threw rocks at the kid the entire way there. Jesse thought the worst was over, but Mark and his friends would come back the next day. They waited until school got out and harassed Jesse again. This time, the kid was with some adults and teachers, but that didn't stop Mark and his friends from throwing rocks anyway. One of the rocks hit Kristen Atwood, and the teachers had to call an ambulance after the incident. A civil suit over the event would be filed in August, but Mark would settle it within a month for an undisclosed amount. While this incident was mostly forgotten for many years, it would regain relevance after Mark sought a pardon in 2014. Mark believed that a pardon was the best way to wipe the slate clean and make amends for the terrible things he had done in the past. Mark stated, The more complex answer is that receiving a pardon would be a formal recognition that I am not the same person that I was on that night. Unfortunately for Mark, many people didn't see it that way. Instead of getting a pardon for his past crimes, he faced public backlash and withdrew the pardon petition a few weeks later. The real reason Mark Wahlberg is banned from owning a gun is that he's a convicted felon. While Mark made a lot of mistakes in his early years, including drug addiction and racist crimes, getting a felony was probably the biggest mistake of his entire life. In April of 1988, Mark assaulted a middle-aged Vietnamese man who was walking on the street. Mark hurled numerous slurs at him, including several related to his ethnicity, and knocked him unconscious. That same day, Mark also attacked another Vietnamese American. That man's name was Johnny Trim. When the police came to arrest Mark, they brought him to the scene of his earlier attack. 
Instead of feeling remorse, Mark confessed to doing it and even sounded proud. You don't have to let him identify me, Mark said. The police also mentioned that Mark frequently made racist remarks about gooks and slant-eyed gooks. Mark would explain after the fact that he was high on PCP, a powerful narcotic, but that wouldn't save him from severe legal consequences. Wahlberg was charged with attempted murder in court for his attacks against both men, but in the end, Mark would plead guilty to a lesser charge of felony assault. Although this charge came with a two-year sentence, Mark would only spend about two months inside of a jail cell. Due to this conviction, Mark would be marked as a felon for the rest of his life. Being a felon in America comes with many restrictions, including severe restrictions on the right to own a gun. Mark believed he had taken the eyesight of Johnny, the Vietnamese-American man he had assaulted, but he would later find out that wasn't the case. While Mark failed to get a legal pardon from the government for his many past actions, he did get the pardon that mattered most of all. When journalists tracked down Johnny Trin many years after the incident, he agreed to give an interview sharing his side of the Mark Wahlberg story. During that interview, Johnny revealed that Mark hadn't taken his eyesight, but that his left eye was already lost due to an injury sustained in the Vietnam War. I was not blinded by Mark Wahlberg, he said. He did hurt me, but my left eye was already gone. He was not responsible for that. When asked about his thoughts on Mark's request for a pardon, Johnny was sympathetic. I would like to see him get a pardon, he said. He should not have the crime hanging over him any longer. Johnny said that he would like to meet with Mark and make amends, and believes Mark is a different person now. He has grown up now, Johnny said about Mark. I am sure he has his own family and is a responsible man. Mark responded positively to the news of the interview and sent word to Johnny that he wanted to apologize in person. Mark offered to fly Johnny and his family to Los Angeles and made another public apology to boot. In 1986, I harassed a group of school kids on a field trip. Many of the students were African American. In 1988, I assaulted two Vietnamese men over a case of beer. Racist slurs and language were used during these encounters, and people were seriously hurt. I am truly sorry for what I did. Mark continued, saying, I was a teenager and intoxicated when I did these things, but that's no excuse. Nor is it okay to beat people up because your friends are doing it. I know there are kids out there doing the same stuff now, and I just want to tell them, don't do it. Although Mark was forgiven by Johnny Trin, many others weren't ready to forgive him for his past mistakes. A group known as 18 Million Rising, which advocates for the rights of Asian Americans in the United States, came out against pardoning Mark for his actions. They critiqued his rap sheet and believed Mark should bear the responsibility for his past mistakes instead of wiping them away. Most of all, the group criticized Mark for only apologizing and reaching out to past victims after he wanted to get a legal pardon. Mark's request for a legal pardon failed, but he may have gained something even greater. With or without a felony on his record, having Johnny's forgiveness might just be pardon enough for Mark Wahlberg. Click here to see 10 things you didn't know about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. See you there.